The following video shows a Desmi service engineer as he overhauls a Desmi SA self-priming centrifugal pump type bare shaft design. For the overhaul we use a genuine Desmi spare parts kit. We'll go through the overhaul step by step by disassembling the pump, replacing all gaskets, sealing units and bearings and completing the overhaul by reassembling the pump. When servicing and overhauling a Desmi pump, we recommend you always study the manual before starting. The manual and spare parts kit are available at www.desmi.com slash aftersales. Make sure you have the necessary tools and the spare parts kit at hand. All the parts needed are included in the spare parts kit. And on the rear side, an item list for all parts is shown. A list of the pumps which are covered by the spare parts kit is also included. On the rear side, a QR code is shown. When scanning the code, enter the www.desmi.com slash aftersales section, where manuals, overhaul videos, spare parts kits, etc. are publicized. Using Desmi Genuine Spare Parts Kit makes it easy and convenient and trouble-free for you to overhaul your Desmi pumps. Disassemble the pump unit from the pump casing by loosening the nuts in the bearing housing. Before removing the pump unit, be aware of the position of the pump parts. To lift bearing housing off the pump casing, use the extraction bolts in the bearing housing and pull the bearing housing backwards. Turn the bearing housing. Remove the gasket and untighten the three set screws in the guide vane and remove old Dubo washers from the set screws. Be aware of the position of the guide vane before removing it. Untighten the set screws that attach the bearing housing to the guide vane. Remove the guide vane from the bearing housing. Unlock the lock nab on the impeller and untighten and remove the impeller nut and the lock nab. Pull off the impeller and spring. Remove the rotating part of the mechanical seal. Remove the sunk key and bearing cover. Loosen the set screws. Open the lock ring and remove the bearing nut and lock ring. Punch out the shaft from the bearing housing. Push out the stationary part of the mechanical seal from the bearing housing. Remove old grease. Remove bearings and distance sleeve from the shaft using a puller or a hydraulic press.
clean the shaft. Unpack the bearing from the spare parts kit and use an induction heater or the like to heat up the bearing to 110 degrees centigrade. Insert the bearing and press it against the shoulder of the shaft. Now heat up the second bearing and insert the distance sleeve and the second bearing. Make sure of the correct orientation of the outer bearing before inserting it onto the shaft. Make sure it's pressed up against the distance sleeve. Insert the lock washer followed by the bearing nut and tighten up the bearing unit. Make sure that the washer locks the bearing nut. Lubricate the bearing with lithium containing grease, LGHP2 for instance, or similar. If the temperature of the pump liquid is above 80 degrees centigrade, high temperature grease is recommended. Also remember to grease half of the volume between the bearings. Make sure all surfaces of the bearing house are cleaned properly and check the seat for flatness and cracks. Install the shaft in the bearing housing. Make sure the shaft is pressed to the bottom of the bearing housing. Install the bearing cover and tighten up the set screws. Unpack the mechanical seal from the spare parts kit and clean the sliding surface with alcohol. Be careful not to touch it after cleaning. Lubricate the outer rubber ring with soap or soapy water. Now press the seat into place in the rear cover and ensure it's correctly embedded. Clean the surface of the seat properly. Remove the sunk key. Place the conical bush on the shaft to prevent the rubber bellows from being damaged during mounting. Lubricate the inner surface of the sliding ring rubber bellows with soap or soapy water and put it over the shaft. Remove the conical bush. Fit the sunk key in the shaft and insert the spring. Grease the impeller and mount it onto the shaft.
Insert the lock nab and impeller nut and tighten up the nut. Lock the impeller nut with the lock nab. Renew the Jubo washers and ensure the set screws using thread glue. Fit the rear plate in the guide vane and secure it with the set screws. Now fit the guide vane to the bearing housing using the set screws with new Dubo washers. Secure the set screws with thread glue. When inserting the guide vane be aware of the correct position. Remove the old gasket from the pump casing and clean surfaces properly. Unpack the new gasket from the spare parts kit and insert it onto the pump casing. In the spare parts kit there are two gaskets, one for the new version of the SA pump and one for the old version. The difference is the number of holes in the gasket comparable to the number of bolts in the pump casing. Fit the rubber gasket to the guide vane. Install the pump unit in the pump casing. Insert the nuts and tighten up the nuts. In the spare parts kit, two rubber gaskets for discharge bend are included, but they only need to be replaced in case of a leak or if the pump is being dismounted from the piping system. In the spare parts kit, a rubber gasket for suction piece is included, but it only needs to be replaced in case of a leak or if the pump is dismounted from the piping system. Replace the clack valve at suction piece. Remove the suction piece from the pump casing by loosening the nuts. Remove the clack valve but be aware of the orientation of the metal parts before removing it. Fit the metal parts to the clack valve and ensure the nut with thread glue. Clean the surface of the suction piece properly and install the new clack valve. Fit the suction piece onto the pump casing and ensure the nuts with thread glue before tightening. Remove the two pipe plugs and renew the doughty seals. Renew the doughty seal at the relief valve. Yeah. 
and the overhaul is now complete.